Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. Thank you for being here. Record breaking heat is causing mountain snow to melt and rivers to rise. In fact, rivers and creeks all across the region now are at the brink of overflowing and a second round of rain is headed this way. We are bringing you live team coverage tonight with our Cody Proctor in North Idaho and Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Legu in the Storm Tracker 2 Weather Center. Jeremy, what's the very latest? Well, when it comes to those ongoing storms, we're watching them move in and they're getting a little bit closer. The storms are going to play a big role in what we're seeing out in some of those rivers. Cody will take a closer look at those in just a minute. But for now, let's talk the weather pattern. Widespread flood watches across much of the inland northwest remain in effect through much of the day tomorrow. Some of the rivers of note are going to be the Kettle River, the Coeur d'Alene River, and the St. Joe. Stahican and Okanagan also rivers of note. And just know that all those rivers are rising from all the runoff from the excessive heat melting the mountain snow. On top of that, we have a round of storms working their way in. Some of the storms we've seen initially are falling apart about as quickly as they do. One up near Sandpoint's holding together pretty strong. That is now working its way just to the west of Sandpoint. One just north of Colville doing a little bit of damage. And we're seeing some gusty wind and some heavy rain out of some of these cells. Looks like we're getting a a little bit of hail out of this storm just northwest of Sandpoint. We'll keep a close eye on that one. Eventually, we get the big push of moisture. I think that hits us here in Spokane, kind of in the 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock hour, eventually moving to northern Washington by about midnight and then out of the region, leaving us with scattered showers through tomorrow morning and then more sporadic thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. Overall, the next few days look a bit wet and a bit cooler. Temperatures in the 50s each day. All right, Jeremy, thank you. And now Krem 2's Cody Proctor is picking up our live team coverage in North Idaho. The Coeur d'Alene River is at risk of flooding. And Cody, what can you tell or what are people there expecting as the water levels continue to surge? Well, Mark and Whitney, they're expecting that water to continue to rise and the water already is very high as of this afternoon. Right now, I am at CDA River RV, which is right next to the Coeur d'Alene River. This is actually site 49. This is an RV spot. Instead, the water is actually all the way up here. Typically, it's over there, but right here, that is the rising Coeur d'Alene River right here. Now, we, from la at last check, it was just a foot under what is considered the stage for minor flooding, which is 43 feet. But according to the National Weather Service, there's actually a good chance the Coeur d'Alene River and other rivers and creeks around the in the Northwest could see some flooding over the next few days. And according to the National Weather Service, the Inland Northwest is seeing this because of the recent warm weather that we've had melting the snow caps of the mountains, as well as some of that recent rainfall. And with more rain expected on the way, it's causing a lot of concerns for people here. Now, again, as Jeremy mentioned, some of those rivers of concern include the Coeur d'Alene River, the St. Joe River, and the Kettle River up in northern Washington. Because of that, they're putting a lot of flood watches and warnings in place. Moving water is very powerful. Uh, it only takes a foot of water to lift a vehicle off the pavement, two feet to lift a, a truck, and six inches of moving water to knock a person off their feet. And that was Robin Fox, the service hydrologist for the National Weather Service Office in Spokane. She says if you do end up seeing flooding in your area, you should go to higher ground and try to avoid driving through it because as she mentioned, it does not take much for it to become dangerous. We've all, many of us have heard the phrase of turn around, don't drown. Now, when I talked with people here with the proprietor of the CD8 River RV, he said already they've had to turn away people and had to send put out refunds for some of their customers and are planning to evacuate people out of the area. However, they do see a light at the end of the weekend. In reporting live in Cataldo, Cody Proctor from 2 News. Well, all right, Cody, thank you very much. And now to a developing story. Former WSU quarterback Jaden Delora has now settled a lawsuit for sexual assault back in 2018. According to court documents obtained by Krem 2, the suit was filed in December of 2021 while Delora was still the quarterback at WSU. The documents show a woman said Delora and a former high school teammate raped her on their high school campus after a football game. The civil complaint states the pair pleaded guilty to second degree sexual assault in a family court and had to write letters of apology to the woman. Neither of them received any any jail time. Now we don't know the terms of the settlement itself. Jaden Delora transferred from WSU to Arizona about a month after the suit was filed where he has continued to play. For the full story, remember you can always go to our website, krem.com.
We turn now to a story that you'll only see right here on Krem 2 News. Earlier this week, we shared the story of a man who went missing while hiking in Liberty Lake Regional Park. Well, tonight we're hearing from that man. Thanks to Spokane County Search and Rescue and the hiker's family, he was found safe and brought back home. Krem 2's Janelle Finch is the only reporter to sit down with Scott Flowers since he returned. Janelle? Well, first and foremost, Scott Flowers is well and in good spirits. He tells me while he spent over 24 hours hiking through the Liberty Lake trails, his motivation for surviving wasn't himself, but surviving for his wife and family. What's left in my emergency blanket? <laughs> Scott Flowers has been on enough hikes to know to bring the essentials. And I had quite a few of these. He had no idea that on his most recent hike to the Liberty Lake Regional Park, He'd have to rely on those essentials to survive. I probably hiked that trail three, two, three times before. The only thing is I've never walked up to the top of Micah Peak. Flowers left for his hike Monday around 9 a.m. He says he tried taking a new path past Hugh's cabin on his way to Micah Peak. I must have missed the turn to go down to the cabin because the trail got narrower and narrower and the trees got more and more. And the only thing that marked the way was... Uh, it looked like elk droppings. Around 7 p.m., he says he knew he needed to find a place to spend the night. Flowers says he found a cabin for shelter and supplies to help make a fire. Tuesday morning, he says he had to get to open land to signal for help. I laid out one of my emergency blankets, and with rocks, I wrote, help, lost. Flowers says his phone wasn't working for most of the hike. He was close to giving up hope before trying to turn on his phone one last time. It turns on. I turn on my emergency beacon on the phone, and I don't know exactly what happened, but they got the signal and they found me. And so they got this pararescue helicopter flying on me, and the guy waved at me, and I waved back. And I think that's the first time I, I really got emotional. Spokane County search and rescue crews air flighted him to Sacred Heart. He says he was discharged, uninjured, and slightly dehydrated. Flowers says every step to keep moving was for his wife, children, and grandchildren, and he's thankful for the people who helped get him home. Flowers said he had enough food and water to likely survive another three to four days, but he says his family didn't know that. When he returned with his wife and son, who drove in from Seattle to help look for him, he said they shared in one of the biggest hugs ever. For the full story in his own words, visit our Krem2 YouTube page. In the studio, Janelle Finch, Krem2 News. I'm just glad he was found that he's okay. Yeah, what right? an incredible no story. Kidding.